Hi, welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Chris Costa. And I'm Joanne Laflamme. Hi, Joanne. So what should we cover today? Well, I'd like to talk about how to set up an employee so that uh, they can use the data collections module. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yep, just a couple of things. Um, you, you know, would set up the user or you could set up the user first in enterprise as a typical enterprise user. Um, although if it's, you know, if you've got 30 people in the data collection shop floor, you know, you could set up one generic data collection user uh, and have those uh, data collection users share that login. Okay. Uh, then you go into the shop floor uh, employee setup and set those users up as, as shop floor users. Uh, and then in job costing, you'll be able to tie those users to a specific department. So if they belong in the pre-press department, press department, uh, you'll be able to assign them to a specific department. Okay. Can we okay. take a look at that? Yep. Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Um, I won't bother going into the tip the normal enterprise user login setup. I'll just go right into uh, file maintenance and I'll go to the employee setup and shop floor. And this is a list of existing shop floor users that I have. I can click the add button and add a new one. Let's say I wanted to make EPMS a new shop floor user that I want to be able to data collect. Okay. Now here's where I can tie it on the shop floor information tab to a specific enterprise login. Again, you don't have to have every data collection user set up in the enterprise user manager. Okay. Um, you know, you might have, like I said, one. You might have one data collection station or two data collection stations, each with their own user login. Um, and then everybody but, shares it. That's yeah, exactly. That. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, for this example, I'll go ahead and assign this to the EPMS login. Another thing this is going to do is it will prompt in data collection for them to enter their password. Okay. Okay, so they'll have to enter their enterprise user manager password. Well, if I don't want them to enter <coughs> passwords, can I not tie it to the login name? Sure, you can okay. just, yeah, at this point, you could just, you know, leave the, the login right. name out at that point. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and tie that here. And you could enter the wage information and then your, you know, how you want them to collect the data, start time, start and end time, elapsed time, and so forth. So I see the three different collection methods. What do those mean? What is the difference between them? Uh, well, the start time is really the truest way to data collect. It's where you're going to have the user log into a, a lo with a login code, and then as they move throughout the shop, they'll log into processes. Um, and then as they log into a process, the prior process will be stamped with an end time. Okay. Uh, so you can have them, you know, clock in, log into machine, log into break, back to a machine, to lunch, back to a machine, uh, and so forth. Um, start and end time and elapsed time, both basically the users would keep track of their time and then after the fact they'd go into job costing, enter the job number, plug in the start and end time, and then or the elapsed time. Okay. Okay, so those two may be pre-press operators or short run digital jobs that um, you know, it makes more sense for them to just keep track of their time and then log, okay, I spent five minutes, I spent five minutes. Okay, so it's kind of like uh, filling out a time card. And, yeah, okay. exactly, rather than have them clock in and out every five minutes when they're moving back and forth. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, next I guess we'll go into job costing and we'll show just how we can, so if I go to job costing now I can go into my department setup, and you'll see a list of departments already here. If I want to assign this user to an existing department, I can just highlight the appropriate department or multiple departments if I want to put the user into different departments. Uh, click Edit, and I can assign the user uh, to that department. Okay. Okay, so uh, pre-press, I can edit. And if I want to bring in the EPMS user here, I can just highlight, select, and it adds it into that pre-press department. Uh, just another note here while we're on this screen, if you look here on the processes and the materials tab, you can assign various processes and materials that you want uh, to that particular department as well. Okay, so these are the processes that that group of employees would be working on. Basically. Exactly, okay. right, exactly. Okay, um, let's say okay. Now, if I wanted to add another department here entirely, I can click the add button and Let's say I want department 6,000. It's going to be post press as opposed to, you know, just bindery. I can give it a unique login code. 
and a logout code. And then from the employees tab, you know, I can hit add if I want to add the EPMS user to this department. You know, I can add them in that way there. Okay. Okay. Um, can we take a look at data collections and, and uh, see how the departments look there? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay, so I'll okay here to save the change there. And if I go to data collection, uh, you'll notice now as I'm highlighted on the pre-press process, okay, I can highlight my EPMS user. I can click clock in. And again, it's going to prompt them for a password because I did assign this user to a, or tie the user to a specific login. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll actually stop here, I think, and maybe do another uh, video in a little bit to talk about the actual data collecting approach. Okay. okay. Great. Questions for this? No, I think you answered my questions on how to set this up. Thank you. Everything was good? Okay. Thank you. Well, that was another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Chris Costa. And I'm Joanne LaFlamme. Please look forward to more to come.